Hi, welcome to IB Physics Made Easy. Today we are going to do some exercises about circular motion. This video will be focused on easy exercises, training exercises, where you will be able to manipulate the formulas we discussed earlier. There will be another video with more challenging exercises based, based on uh, past papers. So, are you ready? Take a pen and paper and in a few seconds there will be the text of the first exercise on the screen. Please press pause and work it out by yourself. Then I will come back and we will discuss the solution. Are you ready? Here we go! Welcome back! How did it go? So this exercise was about a vinyl record which was playing at 33 RPM. RPM stands for revolution per minute. So the first question uh, asks to convert this into radians per second and in degrees per hour. Let's look at that. 33 revolutions per minute is equal to 33 multiplied by how many radians in one revolution? One revolution is one full cycle, so there's two pi radians in one revolution. How many seconds in one minute? Well, there are 60 seconds in one minute, therefore 60 seconds. And here you go, you've got your answer. You've got therefore 33 by 2 pi, 66 pi, divided by 60, equals 1.1 pi radians per second. Simple. Now let's do the same exercise with degrees per hour. Eventually pause the video if you didn't manage the first time and try to do it again with the degrees per hour. So 33 revolutions per minute. How many degrees in one revolution? That's a full cycle. So 360 degrees. How many hours in one minute? Well, there are 60 minutes in one hour, so it's 1 60th. Here you go. So you just plug this in your calculator and you find 7.30 by 10 to the 5 degrees per hour. That was the first question. The second question asks to calculate the period and the frequency of this motion. So we already have the angular velocity, therefore we can write omega equals 2 pi on t, or t equals 2 pi on omega, and then plug in the numbers. 2 pi divided by 1.1 pi, that was the angular velocity, it needs to be in radians per second to keep consistent with the units. And you obtain, therefore, 2 divided by 1.1 is 1.82 seconds. They ask also for the frequency. So frequency is easy, it's just the opposite, okay, the inverse of t. So 1 on 182 will give you 0.55 hertz. Okay, that was question B. Now question C. Points A and B are located on the record. The distance between the center of the record is double for B than it is for A. So here's your record, the center, here you have point A, and here you have point B. Does the linear velocity of point B change? point B, sorry, change compared to that of point A, and why? Well, the definition of the velocity in a circular motion is R omega. Omega is constant, but R changes. So yes, the velocity of B will not be the same as the velocity of A because the radius is different. By how much? 
Well, you have two cases, then you just want to compare the two cases. So you have VA equals RA omega. You have VB equals RB omega. And you know that RB equals 2RA. You just need to plug in this into that, and you get VB equals 2RA omega, and this is VA, so you get VB equals 2 times VA. So yes, the velocity changes, the linear velocity changes, it actually doubles. The final question was, does the period of the motion of point A change compared to that of point B, and why? Well, no, because the angular velocity is constant and omega equals to pi on t. Therefore, the period will also be constant, whatever point you consider. Okay, you are ready for the second exercise? Here it comes. So, how did this one go? All the formulas in this exercise were basic, so if you have trouble with it, please pay attention to the solution. You need to master these equations. These are really the basics. So, a body of mass 500 grams moves in a circle of radius 20 centimeters. So I will convert this to, unite, uh, to SI units immediately, so I don't forget later. So 0.2 meters and 0.5 kilograms. With a speed of 10 meters per second. So that's the data. If you want, you can always draw a little circle uh, like this. Right, with the velocity, put the value, 10 meters per second, and the radius, 0.2 meters. But this is not necessary here. Question A. The distance travelled by the body in each revolution. Well, you see that in one revolution, the body has travelled one perimeter, because it's one cycle. So, the solution would be 2 pi r, and you plug in the numbers, 2 pi by 0.2 meters, give you 0.4 pi, which is in meters... Uh, 126 of meters. Little b. The time taken for one revolution. Well, the time taken for one revolution, it's a period, so I need to find the period. I can start with v equals r omega, because I know that omega is 2 pi on t. Therefore, by rearranging this, I can find t. t equals 2 pi r on v. And then I plug in the numbers. 2 pi r is a perimeter, so I can just plug in 1.26. And the velocity, or the speed, excuse me, is 10 meters per second, giving you 0.126 seconds for the period. Now let us see. The angle swept out per revolution. Well, a one revolution is one cycle, so the angle swept out is the angle for a full a circle, so it's just 2 pi. Now, some of my students said, oh, it's 2 pi. But they, when they did this exercise, they spent some time on question C, because it seemed so easy. Well, at the exams, I've noticed questions like this. So be careful. When you find the answer really easy, read carefully the text to check that you didn't miss anything, but if it's your, you're convinced that, okay, the answer is easy, just put it. But make sure that you did understand the text. Okay, question B. The angular velocity. Well, it's given by V equals R omega. Omega equals V on R. So I just put 10 divided by the radius, which is U point 2, giving me 50 radians per second. E, the centripetal acceleration. In a circular motion, the acceleration on the body will be 
and v square on r. So just plug in the numbers. 10 square is, well, I'll just write it full, 10 square divided by 0 0.2. So 100 divided by 0 0.2, that gives me 500 meters per second square. And finally, question F, the centripetal force on the body, on the body. Well, the force that is causing a circular motion is going to be the net force, so it's going to be F equals MA. Where A is the centripetal acceleration. So you just use the mass, 0.5 multiplied by 250, Oh, sorry, by 500, I go too quickly, equals 250 newtons. So, did you get this right? If not, I encourage you to go back and do it again. Now, exercise three. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's look at the solution of the third exercise. An object of mass m, which is 3 kilograms, lying on an horizontal frictionless table is attached to an inextensible string of lengths 0.5 meters. So the length of the string is 0.5 meters, and if I read the rest, the other end of the string is pinned to the table. The mass is set in an horizontal circular motion. Therefore, I know my 0.5 meters will actually be the radius of a circular motion. So I call it R. And it's set in an horizontal circular motion at a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second. Question A. Calculate the centripetal acceleration. Well, they're telling you everything. When they say centripetal acceleration, you know it's going to be v squared on r. So I just plug in the numbers, 1.5 squared divided by 0.5 meters, giving me 4.5 meters per second squared. Little b. What is the tension of the string? Well, I already know the acceleration on the body, so I know what force will be applied on the body. The force will be, I call it, force of tension, will be equal to MA. And I just plug in the numbers. 3 multiplied by 4.5 equals 13.5 newtons. 13, so 3, yeah? I'll show you. Ugly 3, but it's a 3. C. What is the period of motion? Now, I often you start up with v equals, uh, sorry, with omega equals to pi on t. And I know that omega is also equal to v on r. Therefore, I can rearrange this and find t. t equals 2 pi r on v. And then plug in the numbers. 2 pi by point. 5 meters divided by 1.5 meters per second and that will give me a period of 2.1 seconds. Now you see when I want to solve problems I just need to know basically two formulas. Omega equals 2 pi on t and v equals r omega. And of course the centripetal acceleration v square on r. Now question d. I want to know the angle covered after 3 seconds. So I know theta equals omega t. So I need to calculate omega, which is v on r. Uh, I have v, yes, 1.5, and r is 0.5, so omega is 3 radians per second. So after 3 seconds, omega, oh, sorry, the angle will be 3 radians per second by 3 seconds, 9 radians. So 9 radians doesn't tell me much. I know, however, that 
two power radians, which is about 6.3, is a full cycle. So I probably will be in a second cycle here. So in order to see that, I just need to find how many pi's I have in 9. So I divide 9 by pi, and I get 2.87 pi radian. It's equivalent, these two are the same number. But what I know is that 2 pi is a full cycle. Therefore, these two angles, 287 pi and 0.87 pi radians, are the same angle. They represent the same position. The mass did whoop and then a little bit more. If I convert into degrees, I get something like 157 degrees. So that's about maybe a bit more like this. That's the answer to this question. So, I hope you enjoyed these exercises. If you feel confident, don't, don't hesitate to go to the next video, which uh, treats more challenging exercises, which were inspired by past papers. So very useful for exam preparation. And if you are not confident, I uh, encourage you to review this video, try to do these exercises again, until you master these basic equations. Good luck. Bye.